Hello everyone, today we're going to have some fun with CogVideo X. As we've mentioned before, this AI model generates videos using a small parameter size of 5 and 2 billion parameters. CogVideo X has recently updated its ComfyUI custom node. If you haven't installed this yet, you can check it out on GitHub or search for ComfyUI CogVideo X wrapper in ComfyUI. Download this and test it with whatever CogVideo X models are available to download right now. In the latest update, we've got some exciting new features. First of all, we now have initial context windows with free noise. As we've mentioned about free noise before in Animate Diff, it brings a longer length of context windows, allowing you to generate longer videos to videos and animations. Now it's being applied in Cog Video X for videos to videos and also post to videos. These two pipelines are available right now in Cog Video X. We're going to use the latest CogVideo X Fun 1.1, which supports these two pipelines. Now, CogVideo X Fun isn't officially created by the CogVideo X company. It's from Alibaba PAI, another organization that has created this CogVideo X Fun version 1.1 for inpainting and control pose based on CogVideo X. We're going to try out the control pose today. Inpainting isn't ready yet and isn't supported in ComfyUI, so we'll try one feature at a time in each video. This way, it'll be easier for you to understand and search for the content you want to look at. They've also updated with GGUF quantization models for CogVideo X image to videos and post pipelines. The community has taken the original AI models and done quantization to make them faster and lighter. Meanwhile, you can load this on your local PC, and I've tested that it loads faster. We're going to try this out too. The most exciting thing is the post models I just mentioned from Alibaba PAI's GitHub and Hugging Face repository. It includes control strength, which is like control net to guide the animations and how they're generated. For example, we've got a bear, and below that we have a wolf, but the faces are guided by the control net face. We're going to see how that works in the new post model. Once again, this isn't only for the DW post skeleton as mentioned. I've seen many people on x.com posting demos that only show these two demo videos. They might have just downloaded and reposted them on x.com or elsewhere. Many have only tried the DW pose for control net to guide the animations through the motions. But I've tried some other control net preprocessors that are able to guide the animation creation, and they work well too. So we need to try out different control net models for animation guidance. They've also said it's supporting LoRa right now. Please remember that this isn't the same LoRa as those used in stable diffusion, it's just the same name for embedding files. What this LoRa does is similar to what I found in this Hugging Face repository. It's LoRa for CogVideo XB5B. The fun versions. This LoRa is based on movies and trained on the looks of characters and backgrounds. It can run on the 5B in painting models as well as the post models. I saw that text previously. Yes, they mentioned the LoRa fine tuned can be used on the CogVideo X fun pose model as well. We might try this in other YouTube videos, but it should be fun. It's not a very lightweight LoRa training like what we did in Stable Diffusion or Flux Image Generation LoRa models. It requires a lot more processing and very high GPU power to train this kind of LoRa. We'll see how that works briefly, but we'll just go through the LoRa in this video very briefly and see how it goes in future videos. We'll deep dive on that later. So first, as you can see in this Hugging Face repository, there's a CogVideo X fun version 1.1 B2 and B5 for post and in paint. We're going to try out the B5, the 5B post that will be available here. But in Comfy UI, let's jump into Comfy UI. And as you can see, there are safe tensor files already, which are for GGUF quantization. You can directly download these when you run this custom node for the first time. Just like it usually does, it will download the files for you and save them in your model's subfolder. So it's easy to get and download the model files as well. They've also got the GGUF for image to videos and text to videos models as well. You guys can try these out too. We've also got the videos to videos workflow to try out because there's a new free noise for the context windows options. For example, here I've got these custom nodes already dragged out from the context options. When you have a Cog Video X sampler that has these context options, you're able to drag this out and see these context options custom nodes to connect and you can enable the free noise so it will run longer context windows, allowing you to generate longer videos in local hosts like this.
In the latest update of the COG Video X wrapper, as you can see, there are many different options. I haven't even tested all of them yet, but so far I see that the COG Video X Fun Control Sampler supports the context options for free noise. For the low COG Video X model's custom nodes, you have many options to choose from. For example, you have COG Video X models for the very normal traditional styles of Connect the Pipeline, and you have the COG Video X Control Net, that's maybe the dedicated COG Video X Control Net post enabled models to download and load with this checkpoint custom node, and the GGUF models, which I already have here. For the GGUF models, of course, this is only reading the list of COG Video X GGUF quantization files in this drop down menu. There's also the pub config, which you can use for the temporal and cross thresholds and the spreadsheet settings for all the steps as well. You also have the block edit, which is for editing the transformer of each block. I haven't tested this one yet because it's not really necessary for a typical ControlNet videos model or ControlNet enabled workflow. I've tried a few examples that I just showed at the beginning of this video. Now let's try out this example, which is like a night view with fireworks. We can transform this using depth anything. There are a lot of objects as well as seawater going to the beach and a lot of people. We can try that using the depth anything to capture all these objects in the generated videos. Let's try a very simple transformation like a futuristic style of this firework show view. So here, the low frame cap, as you can see, I've set to 200. That means when I'm using the free noise, I'm able to make a longer video. COG Video X is able to run a longer length right now with longer context windows, and I'm using temporal tiling. Of course, you have other context scheduling as well. I haven't tested all of it yet, but I've tested the static standard and the temporal tiling, which mostly looks pretty fun to play around with when you want to restyle the videos you have using Control Net to guide the motions and make other styles of output generated videos. So let's try this one and create some new prompts here. Let's say futuristic city fireworks in the sky with golden color floor, something like that to make it look fun. Let's bring it down to 50 frames just for this demo and we'll see how that goes. It's also very interesting that as you see, the load videos, I'm capturing each image frame from the loaded video to auxiliary preprocessor. Therefore, I'm able to choose whichever preprocessors I like to play around with. Then, it will resize the preprocessor image frames we capture. For example, this time we're using a depth map. The good thing here, as you can see, is that we don't have any ControlNet Apply ControlNet custom nodes or the ControlNet models linked in between. We're just directly connecting the resized image frames to the pipeline, which is the control videos here. This quantized model of the COG Video XB5 already includes the control net features in this AI model. So our only job is to pass those control net guiding image frames to let the AI understand what we want to control in the videos. That's all we need to do. Once again, we don't have to use control net like we used to do in animate diff or image generations. We just pass the image frames of the preprocessor image into the pipeline and you're ready to go. That's the image encoding. And we pass the control latent into the COG Video X function control sampler to generate your videos and pass to decode. Then we get the image videos results. So let's try this out and see. Okay, so we've got this animation generated. As you can see, we've got the fireworks, futuristic city with the golden floor here. But of course, the quality isn't the same or similar to what we see in Runway, Kling AI, or Minimax, those kinds of larger size parameter AI video models. But at least we've got a 5 billion parameter model running locally that we can play around with and have fun. And at least this is able to use control net guidance for the motions we have. But this one isn't exactly following the depth map control net because while the fireworks follow the smoke in the sky, I set it for more creativity in the generated videos so it won't match exactly with the source video and otherwise it wouldn't be too creative. In the sampler, you can set the control strength. As you can see, I set it to 0.5. This allows more freedom to create other styles of videos rather than just following whatever is in the control net preprocessor image. The ideal control strength for this is 0.7, which generally performs very well for these AI models. Let's try another one. As you can see, this is an almost static, slow motion video. 
Let's try something with fast action. For example, we have a scene, a fight scene, like in a movie, with two guys holding a blade and a sword. They have a fight scene here. This time, let's set it a bit higher to 200 frames. That should capture the whole motion of the throwback of that girl with a reverse blade and the cut through the throw. Let's try these motions and do something else here. For the text prompts, I'll do two ninja fighting scenes. Very simple. But we'll need to add more descriptions to get a better result with Cogvideo X. Some people say that's better, but often I think if we have the control net for guidance, or if you're doing video to video, you don't necessarily need too many text prompts. Just put in the styles you want, and that's good enough in my opinion. So let's try this prompt. Two ninja fighting in Tokyo Tower. Let's see if that works. I'm trying to add windows at nighttime and some fireworks in the sky. Hopefully the backgrounds will appear here. We've got windows outside of the sky tower, and something's happening outside there. Let's try this scene and generate something fun. Okay, so for the fast motions, it's able to generate and kind of do the, well, not very clear objects, but the shape and form are starting to form in these videos. And in the background, as you can see, there are some fireworks going on at the sky tower windows. So it's able to create the motions. Also, the scenes behind here, when we pause these videos, you know, the sky tower view behind, then there's a big window. And outside of that, there are fireworks going on. But the drawback is that the two characters are supposed to be ninjas, but they're not really high quality generations in these scenes. But we can see the blade going through and the motions do follow what we have in the source videos for the control net. Yeah, so it's kind of creating the form already with the Cog Video X. But of course, we can't compare the quality with what we have in other higher or larger size AI video models. That's the truth of it. We can also try the DW post. The DW post, of course, is going to be the best performing for these models. So I'm going to render the same text prompts, the same reference image for the control net as well, and compare these two videos together. <laughs> Okay, so for the control net DW post, we have clearer results this time. The windows, everything in the background, it's able to create better because we give more freedom for the AI video models to do whatever they want. The only thing we're guiding the AI video to do is the two ninjas fighting scene. Of course, these fast motion fight scenes can be a little blurry because, you know, when it's going fast motion and the blade is going back and forth and two characters are moving so fast, we sometimes aren't able to capture those motions in a low resolution video like that. But at least this is a good start for AI video models running locally. And we can do a side by side comparison here. As you can see, the source video, of course, is very clean because it's a real video taken in HD resolution. And we've got the ControlNet DW post and rendered video based on this guidance of control net to create such fast motion effects and that is way better than what we used to have in the text to video or image to video models you know even in animate diff we hardly generate something like that that looks totally different from the source videos because when we did it in animate diff a lot was influenced by the backgrounds and the shape and form of the character as well but right here we've got a lot of different styles and backgrounds in the generated videos it's a much better starting point. I can't say this is a good quality video, but at least we can start from here, do a little enhancement, maybe have a refiner sampler to make it cleaner, etc. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys got some inspiration on how you can use the CogVideo X models and create some cool animations. But of course, this result is not the final result. You have to fine tune it. For example, something like this morphing or unclear parts of the two characters in the fight scenes. You may have to use Animate Diff Unsampler to refine those motions as well. Then that will be a better result. So that's it for this video, and we'll talk more about the Cog Video X new features in the next coming videos. So see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.